I might have just found my brand new irons and I've not even hit a shot with them yet. <laughs> I don't want to be too presumptuous though. In this review, I'm testing out the brand new Wilson Staff Model CB irons. These look absolutely incredible. Can't wait to give them a review here on the Hit Golf Channel. Oh my god, that strike! I don't think I need to hit another golf shot. If I hit the green with this one shot, these are going straight in the bag. Look at them. I mean, they're gorgeous. They really are. There's a few noticeable changes with Wilson Irons. First off is the logo. Like, we've always seen the big WS in that shield. That has now been taken away. Um, mixed thoughts on that at the moment. I think it'll grow on me, but Wilson are obviously trying to do something that's a little bit different. Maybe catch a few more golfers' attention. Obviously, they are bringing out irons in a very saturated market. Like, how do Wilson irons get in players' golf bags over Titleist irons or Callaway, TaylorMade, etc. Ping. They've got to do something a bit different. Maybe this more sleek look could be the answer. As I mentioned, these are the Wilson Staff Model CB irons. The big tagline is precision meets forgiveness. They're supposed to look like a player's iron behind the golf ball, but because of the cavity back, offer shed loads of forgiveness. I really like that look iron. It's gorgeous. I'm going to hit, got the full set actually over there in the white vessel bag. Um, I'm going to hit some seven irons, some three irons and some pitching wedges. Quite simply, it could be a contender for my golf bag. I've used Wilson irons in the past, the V6 irons and the staff model blade. In fact, when I've had a one hole in one in my life, and that was with a seven iron from Wilson, which actually is at home, retired after that one round, after that game of golf when I played open qualifying and got the hole in one. Um, there's a few more call out on technology as well, but let's get here and let's hit some seven irons first and then we'll talk about what other features are included with these irons. They do look very nice behind the ball. I, I really like that head shape. I'm currently using the T, uh, Titus T100s. They look very similar to them, to be honest, head shape wise. Just a bit of a comparison. That's so nice. Really nice. I kind of thought they were going to feel good. I do. Um, they just they they were just a good feeling iron. Um, there's a couple of other tweaks. They've made the uh, hosel here fluid feel hosel. So basically, they've taken weight out. Stuck it more towards the toe to, again, to even out that distribution to make it forgiving. I mean, that was middle. That was absolutely struck in the middle. And it felt great. It's hit the green from 170 quite comfortably. What I'm also quite keen to look at with the numbers today, the face, and I'm not seeing this on irons. You see it on wedges. It's got like a milled finish to it. So I'm very intrigued to see what that does to spin. Obviously, we're in a dry setting here in the hit studio. I actually want to see how that increases the spin potential of the irons. Yeah, that's really nice. Right, set a few more. Sound good, feel nice. A little bit drawy on that one, but middle of the green, another good hit. What's interesting with this set of irons, from four to pitching wedge, the price is £1,050. It's quite incredible, the set, the price of irons over the last five, six, seven years. I remember when I was reviewing products, when I first really started YouTube, it was very rare. You'd get a few, but very rare to have a set of irons at a thousand pounds. Now, this would be considered somewhat cheaper. Also, loft on these aren't super strong. They're not designed, again, to go a million miles. The loft of a seven iron is 34 degrees. The loft of a pitcher wedge is 46 degrees. And here's all the other lofts as well, so you can see but they're very kind of traditional lofts. So again, if you're looking for more distance, these might not be the irons for you. Oh, that was a terrible golf shot. Let's see what that does for forgiveness. <laughs> oh, I don't know what I was thinking there. I hit, the, uh, I hit the big ball before the little ball there, I'm afraid. That was a horrendous shot. I, I, I'd like to judge that on some level of forgiveness, but I'll be honest, the strike was so bad. 
I don't know what club could have saved me at all there. That was uh, that was a really poor strike. <laughs> that was a lot better. Flight wise, really good. I, I'm so intrigued to see the spin when we look through the numbers in a minute because I want to see if that milling of the face has actually increased any spin at all. I think a couple more seven irons, and I want to move to the, the pitching wedge and then the three iron as well. I win. I just feel like I'm going to get holding ones if I put these in the bag. Yeah, nice. Bar that really, really horrible heavy one that I hit, all those seven irons comfortably hit the green and, and around the distance I'm normally expecting, 165 to 170 yards carry. Again, we'll dive through the numbers in a minute. Let's switch it up and I'm going to grab the pitching wedge, actually. Yeah, looking at the pitching wedge, what you don't want from a player's iron is kind of a, a, an oversized pitching wedge. Obviously, there's a big talk in this set that it's supposed to look like player's irons behind the ball, but offer that sense of forgiveness behind obviously you've got that cavity back that's a nice looking wedge that is really nice because you you need to be creative with a pitching wedge you might hit some softer shots some you know delicate shots you don't want something kind of too big of a of a shovel behind the golf ball it's a gorgeous looking wedge i've put, just put the green out there at 130 yards again this is 46 degree wedge and all again that milling of the face I'm, one thing i would potentially call out certainly with milling on the face what's going to happen if that potentially wears down might not do but is that going to is that going to be an effect that's going to last for a long time obviously time will tell on that but i do certainly i love the look of it the, the toe and the heel are so so shiny when we were doing close-ups just earlier i mean the toe almost camouflaged and disappeared in the max it's so reflective and shiny um again Potential call out might be difficult in the sun. You know, if you, if you, it probably won't be just because the loft isn't enough, but if the sun hit that pitching wedge at the right angle, I mean, the bloody thing could blind you. Right. So, a few nice wedges. Lovely feel. Really nice feel. I am feel. I am very feel. Stop. I mean, it stops quick on there on the simulator. I'll look at the spin shortly. If that's getting anything close to 10,000. Uh, revs per minute with a pitching wedge, that's really high. That would kind of be the, almost the gold standard. So we'll see how close it's getting to that number. I'm not, personally for me, I'm not seeing loads of negatives at the moment. I think it's a good looking set. They, they're kind of hitting the numbers that I want it to hit. The feel is exactly what I want to get from the set of irons. Hey, it's going really well at the moment. The big test, however, certainly if I'm considering putting these in the bag, is over there, I've got a three iron. Is that club that I can hit? Is that one that naturally goes in the bag as well? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the pitching wedge there at all. Let me just hit one, I'm just gonna... What happens if I just try and hit one 100 yards on the nose? Can I kind of play a little delicate one? They're about 130 yard carry. What about if I just did a little half swing? What's it giving me carry? That's not bad. Was that like 96 yards? I think that was on the carry. I'll take that. Yeah, 96 yards. Pretty good. Pretty good. Right. However, as I mentioned, the real test. The three iron. They've, they have re Honestly, they've really excelled themselves with the craftsmanship. I think they're a gorgeous looking set, like from every angle. Really, really nice. I kind of like the the brushed finish on the back cavity as well. And you've got the, the only, like I say, the only thing is very, very, very shiny, like almost borderline too shiny, almost mirror like. I don't. I'd be a little bit worried. If after six months a year, these irons look absolutely battered. They could do. They really could do. They might not do. Depends how you look after them. But they've certainly got a lot of um, a lot of shiny metal to scratch up. Right. Behind the ball, it's not too offset. It's actually a, a nice looking iron. It's, it's not ridiculously bladed. 
Uh, again, I use a three iron quite a lot in my set. Um, I've currently got like a T. I can't remember what my, what my Titleist iron is now. I've got the the TU505, which is a real chunky three iron in my bag. This is a bit more of a, a small looking, almost more like a traditional three iron. Put the flag at 230. Can it execute? Oh my God, that's right. I don't think I need to hit another golf shot. It doesn't get a lot better than that. It does not get better than that. That was absolutely middled. 217 yards of carry, just under 4,000 uh, revs per minute spin. Looking at the GC quad numbers just here, do you think the spin rate is high with these irons? I think one more, one more. That was an interesting one, a little bit skinny. Nowhere near as good as the first one and strike. Yeah, it's Mr. Green, but again, for a 230 yard golf shot, I wouldn't be overly, overly disappointed. I'll just go one more because I'm enjoying hitting it. What, what, what's interesting here? Just thinking out loud, and you might not like this. Are these irons almost priced too cheap? And what I mean by that, imagine if this set is, let's, let's call it 2,000 pounds or even two and a half thousand pounds. Would you as a golfer kind of almost think, well, they must be good to that much price. Like what do Wilson almost have to do to catch people's attention? I'm not saying that's the case. I'm not saying that golf brands or Wilson should charge double. I mean, they're an amazing set of golf clubs, don't get me wrong, but they couldn't, they can't go the other way. If these were half the price at 500 pounds, you'd suddenly think, you know, they mustn't be very good, those Wilson irons. Pricing has such a mad influence on our buying decisions. Um, I mean, they are bloody good. I think a thousand pounds. It is expensive. Don't get me wrong, it is. But these are, these are really, really nice. If I hit the green with this one shot, these are going straight in the bag. Oh, hang on, hang on. Is it going to do it? I can put from there. That's fine. <laughs> I can put from there, right. Let's dive through the numbers and have a quick look because I've been very impressed with what I've seen so far in the uh, hitting these irons. They're really nice. They are. Uh, they, they've, it's what I've come to expect from Wilson Irons, to be honest with you. We can dive through the numbers a little bit here. No massive shocks. Seven iron for me was carrying 162 yards. Obviously, I had that real bad one in there, that bad strike. Uh, spin rate, 6,400. Solid. I maybe expected a bit more, but solid. The pitching wedge. Averaging 8,800 yards. I, I did take that 100 yard shot out there. That's 130 yards carry. Again, ticks all the numbers. And even the three iron carry 215. Uh, you saw the dispersion a little bit right and left, but not horrendous. As an overall set, massively impressed. And I think it's fair to say, I think not that I'd made my decision up already, but this has clarified and verified, shall I say, my decision. And I think to a video coming soon, these. Irons will be in the bag.